show. It is a Friday, so you have to forgive the uh, microphone mishap. Let's take a look at what we got going on. Obviously, a lot uh, to talk about today, <laughs> especially with some of my calls I made yesterday. We have the composite up about 0.94%, that the NQs up about 0.79%. The Dow Jones Industrial trading up about 0.89%. Uh, down futures as well, up roughly the same there. Uh, the E-mini up about 0.58, and then the SPY itself up about 0.67%. Uh, the dollar had a little bit of down movement earlier this morning, but uh, we're right back up, trading at 104.28. Still, the, <laughs> the American economic numbers that are coming out, right? Um, even there, if there were some kind of shaky numbers, especially with some of the job reports, um, it's not that bad. I think we're still on. I think we're still on uh, track for two twenty-five basis point cuts uh, until the end of the year, right? When you have the rest of the global economy a little bit shaky, people are going to come to the dollar in those circumstances, and uh, yeah. So any kind of like momentary movement down, I, I think we're still in this kind of. We've been consolidating recently, but I could see this one hundred four staying, uh, you know, somewhat for a long time until you get some major. Uh, kind of cuts, right, that start to take effect, I would say. And then also you start getting kind of improving uh, economics globally as well. You have crude oil back up uh, 0.39, but not really doing too much, still at 69.53 on that contract. You had Iran come out and say that they were going to do another retaliatory strike on Israel. Uh, it seems like the market is not really reacting to that in any major way uh, like it was prior. I also don't fully buy that that was the reason why you had gas running up that, or excuse me, crude oil running up that high. Uh, but anyways, you have uh, gold coming off a little bit today, trading at 2,745. It's quite a pullback uh, from some of the highs, but we're still uh, trading quite higher. Of course, the high that we made, uh, I believe, two days ago at, what is that, 28.01, 80 cents, nice. Copper up about 0.47%, trading at 430. You have silver off about 0.7%. And the Russell trading up 0.61%. Oh man, what else do we have going on? Well, I think I need to talk about this. Uh, that's going to be Intel. Okay, so what happened? <laughs> I ended this show yesterday. I mean, we're up 8.5%, right? I ended the show yesterday. I think it's not you know, any secret that I don't really like this stock right now. I, I don't like any kind of prospects it has going forward. Uh, let's talk a little bit, I guess, about it. We're, I'm going to go through what they released in the press release as well. Give me a second. Let's pull this over here. Okay. So they had third quarter revenue of three, uh, 13.3 billion. You have a loss of about 388 on uh, gap EPS, non-gap attributable was a loss of 46 cents. Uh, loss of 389 impact on the gap EPS tributed to Intel from th so this is what a lot of people are saying is why it's an okay time to get in here right is because some of this major L with the EPS was from these impairment charges right this isn't going to occur you know going forward and you have 2.8 billion of restructuring charges and a 63 cent impact to the non gap EPS uh, from these 3.1 billion of impairment charges as well. They say they're making significant progress on a plan to deliver $10 billion in cost reduction in 2025. You know, that's good, I guess, right? And, and they need to do something like that, but it just doesn't make it still attractive, in my opinion. We're going to go a little bit deeper as well as to why I think some of the other stuff they're talking about is maybe... Uh, a little bit optimistic as well. It forecasting fourth quarter 2024 revenue of 13.3 billion to 14.3, expecting fourth quarter gap EPS of 24 cents of a loss there. Okay, so our Q3 results underscore the solid process, excuse me, progress we are making against the plan we outlined last quarter to reduce costs, simplify the portfolio, and improve organizational efficiency. We delivered revenue above the midpoint, which is I think partly why this is running up today, because uh, it wasn't as bad, right, as some people had uh, anticipated. Uh, you know, I, I suppose me included, right, um, I, I wouldn't have imagined something like that. I didn't think it was going to be, like, uh, any more abysmal than anyone kind of anticipated. It just didn't seem like an attractive play, right, at least on my end. Uh, the momentum we were building across our product portfolio to maximize the value of our x86 franchise combined 
with the strong interest Intel 18A is attracting from Foundry customers. This is the thing that they are riding on heavily, and I think it has a problem with it, right? In the past, what was going on is they weren't able to produce enough of this at any kind of yield that was commercial, right? They say at this point that they have gotten that kind of tolerance to point two roughly, right? Uh, and that means you get something like a, above 80% or even higher uh, of, of efficiency in the production of this, right? So, so you know, uh, exceeding 80% of the, the chips are usable. And they said that they're gonna be able to start mass producing this 2025. There are like notes from suppliers. This is coming via Reuters, right? Saying that that actually might not be the case, right? So they claim the defect density has reached, uh, reached below 0.4 defects per square centimeter. That's what you need, you know, below that essentially uh, for this to be uh, marketable in any way. The planning documents, however, from a supplier suggest potential delays as a digital design kit is still awaited before proceeding. Sources suggest that a large scale production using Intel 18A might not happen until 2026, which is a little bit off from what Gelsinger is saying. Now, you could also argue that or we're able to start producing them at some, you know, meaningful amount in 2025. But but when do we start seeing, um, you know, meaningful revenue from that? Right. So then additionally, restructuring charges uh, meaningfully impacted Q3 profitability and we took important steps towards our cost reduction goal. The actions we took this quarter position for us improved profitability and enhanced liquidity as we continue to execute our strategy. Still got a lot of time going on for that as well. Uh, let's see what else. Take a look at this here. Yeah, so in Q3 24, you have the CCG group down 7%. Data, this is the saving grace, right? These, and I think it's really the Xeon chips because nobody's using, okay. We'll talk about this when we get back because I still got a little to talk about on it. And I think there are some issues still.